Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing another painting. I felt really inspired by doing the last painting I worked on, so I wanted to do another one. This time, however, I've increased the canvas size and I'm going to be doing a screen cap redraw instead of just drawing a random character. So today I've picked um, a screen cap from Princess Tutu. It's probably a little later in the season. It's been a while since I've watched it, so I can't quite remember when it's from. But I wanted to pick something that was a little dramatic and, you know, was different than just maybe a smile or something like that. I wanted to try and practice the expression. And it had this cool color in the background, so I thought that'd be fun to paint since I'm still learning how to use the acrylics. And all in all, I really love this painting and I really like how it turned out. Uh, it took a while because, like I said, I was getting used to the medium, but all in all, it was a really fun experience. For those who don't know, Princess Tutu is an anime. It's from the early 2000s and it's based on, I believe it's the play, like loosely based on it. And it's about this character named Ahiru, or Duck in the English. And she is this duck who receives a necklace which can turn her from a duck to a human. And she uses this power to become Princess Tutu and uh, protect the, the person that she loves. And it's a really, really slow but really sweet anime. And I, I really recommend it to those who are looking for something that's just very story driven. And for me, it was really visually appealing, even though it's an older anime. The art style is very different than what I feel was coming out at that time. It, yeah, it has the big eyes and whatnot, but it just, it was such a, a different anime to me and a different take on the magical girl genre. Like instead of fighting these big bad monsters that are created by this evil person, it was told as a story, like a storybook and it wasn't about these big fights, it was about the emotion behind what was happening in each episode. And it really is just a beautiful anime. It's a little hard to find. They did a DVD release, uh, like I think two years ago, so if you're looking for it, I would honestly give it a try, because I'm sure it's out there. I, I bought the DVD, I, I love this show so much, it holds a special place in my heart. And the main character, Ahiru, um, She's just so, she's dorky, but she's sweet and genuine and really cares about the people in her life and always wants to do the right thing. And it, I think that's probably why I like her so much as a magical girl. Like she shares qualities like the other ones in the, in the genre, but there's just something so unique about this series that I just, I'm always drawn to and I've watched it like three or four times now. It's just been a couple years. Originally I was going to do a Sailor Moon one or a Car Captor Sakura one, but the Sailor Moon bandwagon one was, uh, you know, a little while ago, so, you know, I didn't want to do that one. Plus everyone had done that one. And Car Captor Sakura, there were, I almost felt overwhelmed because there were so many I wanted to do. So, but in the end, I, I chose this one, like I said, because this anime was really near and dear to my heart. I actually had found it by a music video, which I'll link down below, which I feel was such a fun representation of the series and it really drew me in. So hopefully maybe, you know, someone else will watch it, have someone to talk to about it. If you guys have watched it, let me down, know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. As for the painting itself, um, it was a little difficult. I kept spraying paint everywhere because, you know, flicking the paintbrush on the side of the canvas. So the plastic sheet I have underneath my painting was just getting covered in paint and acrylic is a little difficult to get off this plastic. It just kind of almost sticks to it like glue. but. I spent a lot of time on the background. I really wanted to try and get the dynamic feel of the background because it's supposed to be like a shocking moment. I don't think I entirely achieved it. I had a really hard time getting the white in there to be really, really strong. And it is a little darker than the original screen cap. But I think all in all, it still works and it still looks really good. I took a lot of time to blend it. 
And it wasn't until I kind of gave up on caring where my lines were that I really started to achieve the blended look because I was so worried about ruining the line art, but eventually I'd have to ruin the line art. So there's nothing I could really do about that. Bringing in the white here, you see it just, it blended in so quick. I, I don't know if maybe there was a better way to do it or maybe I just was being too impatient with it. I ended up getting it as close as I was gonna get with acrylic. But all in all, it, like I said, I think it looked really good and it still captured the dramatic feeling of it. So, so in the last painting I did, I did a five by seven painting, which was significantly smaller than this. So this time I'm doing a, I believe it's a 10 by eight painting. I bought uh, a, like a multi-pack at Michael's and it, it was on clearance because one of the canvases was damaged, so I got them for like four dollars instead of seventeen. So I, you know, I felt a little more comfortable moving on to the bigger canvas because I knew it wasn't super expensive for me this time. And it, I mean, it's not far off from what I would normally draw on like a, you know, eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So I don't really know why I was intimidated at first. I think it's just I didn't really want to ruin my sketch underneath. I don't know about anybody else, but I really, really like my sketches and I find when I move past the sketching part, it just, it never quite looks the same. And even when I line it, it doesn't have the same feeling as when I had sketched it. But I think, I think that's just normal. I think that happens with everybody. Everybody usually likes their sketch first, right? Because it's more free, you're less restricted by what you're doing. There's just a lot more movement in the sketch. But. Who knows maybe one day I'll get past that I mean like I said in the last video you can always paint over acrylic and I think that's been really freeing in these paintings because I haven't felt so restricted before this I was really heavy into watercolor and I was terrified to touch a watercolor piece because nine times out of ten you know you put too much down it's really hard to lift it off the paper as you can see, I reused some of the paints that I used in my last painting, and I, I have a bunch mixed up on the side. Some some kind of worked, some needed to be really altered. Like this color I had was for another painting I did that never ended up getting finished, and I added a bunch of white and red to it, and I, I don't know why, I just couldn't get her hair color right. It was, it's almost like an orange strawberry, not like strawberry color, but like you know when you have strawberry blonde? It's like almost like a, a ginger strawberry color and I really struggled to get that color and what I had mixed in there I think was dollar store paint so it was really really thin I ended up doing like four or five coats just of that orange paint alone and it took forever to get through it because the background was so dark but I knew it would be harder to go and paint her first than to paint the background first because that's what had happened last time I had struggled with it Especially in this one, I, I really struggled with the white that I do later because the background was so tar uh, dark. I had to layer it and layer it and layer and I, I felt like I was really wasting paint but I couldn't seem to get around it. I even picked my, well, m more expensive white paint but I don't, I don't really think it made a difference to be honest. Maybe a little less layers but that orange definitely was not as opaque as I would like it to be. But live and learn. I think what really helped with this painting to make it feel almost easier for me was that I did a screen cap redraw. I find it's harder to make a picture look really good in the moment and while I'm learning to use these paints I feel it was a good way to go just something to practice with and while yeah I'm really proud of it and it took a lot of time it still was kind of in that practice range. There, it's such a different medium than anything I'm used to, so I wanted to pick something where I didn't really have to think about what I was drawing. And I think it's it's a fun exercise to do for people who are, you know, in an art block or not sure what to draw. Just pick something from a favorite show that you have and draw it in your own style. It's always interesting to see how it would look in your style and what little changes that you make and what changes that they had. and what other people do. That was the fun thing about the Sailor Moon one was seeing how every person drew it differently. 
like some people uh, they did it digitally some people painted it some people 3d modeled it it was really really cool to look at you know and I I love doing these it's a lot of fun and it's really relaxing because I just I don't know there's I don't feel any pressure when I'm doing them to be honest I think there's a lot of potential for people to kind of grow and try and draw something they're not used to drawing with these screen cap redraws because anime ha and well regular tv has such diverse storylines and what happens in them and stuff so i think it gives the opportunity to maybe draw something you're not normally going to draw like i probably wouldn't have drawn something with such a dark background i usually draw really bright and colorful i just i'm more comfortable with that it's more appealing but something like this, which is expressive and it's got that background to help with uh, the the movement of the piece, it I probably wouldn't have done that unless maybe I was doing a comic page. And uh, let's be real, I'm I'm not doing that right now. So it was interesting to draw something different for once. I'm curious though to see what this may have looked like if I had used a different medium, like if I had done maybe markers or pencil crayons or even watercolor to see maybe how it would have turned out different because with the acrylic it's so opaque you can really get those saturated colors whereas something like watercolor is it's really light and you have to build up with it and by no means am I confident enough to do that right now but it's an interesting thought maybe one day down the line I could do one where I do one in acrylic and maybe one in a different medium and see just how different it is. I know a lot of people like to do these digitally because you can really match it like you can get to look like a 90s anime with filters and uh, you can match the backgrounds by painting them different and doing the line art different so I, I feel depending what you use it could really change the outcome of how it looks as well though the one thing I can say about this painting is that during the entire time I'm doing this up until when I paint in her face and line it she just looks super creepy to me it's just those blue eyes with no pupils and the vacant white mouth is just ugh, it's just creepy it almost makes you think of like a ghost or something <laughs> you know you see these videos of people who are able to do the line art with the paint brushes and I wish that was something I was able to do because it's just incredible to watch the line art be done with one whole paint stroke just oh my god it's so cool but I am I'm not that confident in my paint strokes I mean even what I'm doing right now is difficult for me because I have this sense of like it has to be perfect when I do it or else I really really don't like it and that's why you'll see I do blocks of color in one go rather than like painting whatever whenever and that's kind of always just been my thing I'm really really terrified of being messy with my work so acrylic is slowly helping me break out of that because it, it, it's a messy medium what can I say? For her face though, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do something more dramatic. It's very light on camera, but it's quite dark in person. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do like a purple to make the shadow really intense on her face like it is in the screen cap, or if I wanted to just keep it kind of just a darker tone of her skin tone. And I ended up just keeping it a darker tone of her skin tone because I didn't think the gray would look very good doing it my way and I did think about doing maybe like a purple but it just it, again it, it looked really weird to me so I ended up just sticking with what I had and I think all in all it looks all right I mean yeah it's not as dramatic as the original but I think it just looks better and like originally it's only got the part on her nose that's shaded so I this time I did like from her nose up shaded trying to make it look more dramatic because I did lose some of the expression while I was painting and I hope it came across the way I was intending it to but you know you can only do so much I didn't want to rework it to the point where it was you know super thick and just clearly overworked during this whole painting process I had been avoiding the what are feathers on her shoulders because in the original shot it's entirely black and you can't really like you can tell their feathers because there's feathers around her and stuff but there's not really the same detail that I was going for so I was really undecided if I want to 
paint it entirely black and have it more true to the screen cap or if I want to paint in the feathers because if I painted in all the feathers I was going to have to do you know each individual feather and do it on both sides and it felt like a really intimidating task so I actually bounced around the piece quite a bit avoiding that until I finally made a decision on it and that honestly made this painting take a lot longer than it should have because you know it's looking at it's like oh my god I don't want to mess it up even though I could just paint over it again if I really needed to. I did eventually decide to choose to paint all the individual feathers on the the black feathers not the ones up by her face because I feel the ones up by her face were meant to be long and elegant so I wanted to just leave them as whole pieces and make it more look like a headpiece than feathers. I think they're feathers. I've always thought they were feathers so that's why you don't see me uh, you know individually painting each of the feathers. I think it just looked better this way rather than making busy work of all the the white feathers. As you can see I've painted in her eyes finally and I will eventually go in and add in the the pupils with a Posca pen but I just couldn't stand the vacant blue eyes anymore and I added some of the smaller details off camera because I had to get really close to the canvas and paint it because it was just so small and I, I don't I didn't even remember that she had this pendant on her like in the in the photo it's got the clasp holding the feathers and then it's got a necklace and the necklace is kind of an important part in the series it's how she transforms back and forth so I, I don't know why I completely forgot about it until this point for the feathers around her, I decided to just kind of make them really messy because they were meant to be fallen off feathers and they're supposed to be like, you know, the bad guy feathers. So I didn't think it was necessary to paint them all perfect. Like you might find, you know, a feather that fell off a duck. It might come in like a perfect shape. I thought for the sake of what it was for, I wanted it to be more dramatic. I didn't end up putting uh, them in the exact same place as the screen cap because I, to be honest, I completely forgot where they were when I started painting them <laughs> and by the time I realized where they were I'd already painted them. I wasn't about to go in and repaint the background after I'd done all this work. So there, I tried to place them in areas that I thought made sense and I, I think they look alright. I didn't want to, I didn't want them to be super prominent because they're supposed to be in the background more than anything. but. The feathers on the front, like I said, I painted them individually and to be honest they kind of look more like leaves, but I feel that was kind of unavoidable. I grabbed the smallest paintbrush I could and tried to do the lines as best as possible, but it was such a small paintbrush and such small details it was really hard to keep it really clean and concise. So. I was really hating it at first. I, I had to push through it because I knew by the end of it it would look better, but in this stage it's in that ugly stage for me and it was it was really hard to look at. So it took a little bit of perseverance to get through this. But I mean sometimes that happens. I have a painting on my wall that I had uh, painted with watercolor and to get through it I wanted to paint... Um, these symbols in the background and when I put the first few down it looked horrible but by the time I finished it it looked good so I knew if I could just get through it it would it would look okay in the end I didn't do a terrible amount of shading with them though I didn't I tried to add in some highlights and some dark areas but I felt it was already so busy it didn't really seem to matter if I had shaded them a lot because at the end of the day I it would have almost got blobby and I might as well just painted it all dark color anyway it is what it is. I think I'd like to do more of these down the road as well. I think it's a really fun way to just draw something and have fun with what you're drawing rather than feeling, you know, stressed that it doesn't look good enough. So I, I have some extra canvas. I think I might look into doing another one, but next time I think I'm going to do Carcaptor Sakura because that one, much like this, holds a special place in my heart and I think it'd be a lot of fun. Plus, her outfits are just so gorgeous, so there's so much to choose from. But I, it'll be hard to narrow it down. Even with this one, the only thing that really restricted me was the, the lack of screen caps. It's really hard to find 
you know HD quality and see the details in it so I might have to go and get my DVDs and kind of look through it that way to do more of these though I may do them more in my sketchbook next time maybe not on a canvas we'll see so we're at a point now where I was comfortable with how it was turning out and I knew it was time to line it so much like the last painting I did I took my Posca pen which I forgot to test first and just went to lining it and I did smudge it a little bit but thankfully I smudged it on the feather so it wasn't as noticeable as the last time and I tried to take my time with it something I actually noticed though was between this canvas and the last canvas I used this one was way less textured so it was a lot easier for the Posca to go down on and line it I did make some mistakes here and there I think that's just kind of natural when you fine line anything but I ended up fixing it before the final results are shown at the end of the video just to kind of clean it up. All in all this was a really good experience for me. I really enjoyed the painting and the process of it even though it took me a little longer to do than I was hoping. It was just a lot of fun to you know paint something that I, I really like and just relax and do it. And I hope you guys are enjoying me trying something new. I know it's different than what I used to do, but I'm having a lot of fun exploring new mediums and seeing what works for me and what doesn't. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you know leave a comment down below. I'd love to read your guys' comments and interact with you. And if you guys got ideas for other videos you'd like to see, I'd love to hear them. But with that, this painting's almost over and uh, I'll just let you guys enjoy the last bit, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!